Hey everybody, it's been a very long time since I've created a video, but I'm back on YouTube. And to celebrate me coming back on YouTube, I decided to revisit one of my old series that I do called Good or Bad. Today's movie that we're going to be talking about is Terminator Dark Fate. On Rotten Tomatoes, it has a 70% from critics and an 82% from audiences. On IMDb, it has a 6.2 out of 10. On Metacritic, it has a 54% meta score and a 3.9 out of 10 user score. And on Letterboxd, it has a 2.8 out of 5 stars. There have been known Terminator movies that have disappointed a lot of Terminator fans, but this one has been split down the middle. There seems to be more love and appreciation for this movie rather than hate, and if there is actual hate for the film, it's mostly because of what happens at the very beginning of the movie. It does relate to a spoiler, so if you haven't seen the movie yet, I recommend you to go and watch the movie first and then come back and watch this video. Most of the reasons why people are upset with this movie is because John Connor, a very significant character to the Terminator franchise, at least in the first two movies, was killed off at the very beginning of the film. Now the question that I actually want to ask is, is there more to dislike from this movie other than what happened in that moment? Or is it the fact that people hated the same reason why a lot of people hate Alien 3? Well that's what we're going to go ahead and talk about today. My special guest that I invited on here today to defend this movie is my good friend Ren from Ren Geekness. I also want to apologize for taking such a long time for doing this video, but I finally got it uploaded onto YouTube. so. I hope you're not mad at me, Ram. Anyway, he is a huge fan of the Terminator franchise, and I would go ahead and say that he is also one of the biggest defenders of Terminator Dark Fate, which is why I wanted to invite him onto this series to defend this movie. So with that being said, Ren, go ahead and give out your defense on why you would say that Terminator Dark Fate is a good movie. Thank you so much, Chandler, for having me on your channel. I am more than happy to provide reasons for why Terminator Dark Fate is actually not only a great sequel, but a great movie on its own. And for those who don't know me, hello, my name is Ran Geekness. I do movie reviews, trailer reactions. I'm a geek at heart, first and foremost, and I'm also a filmmaker myself. So what I provide to you is movie reviews from the perspective of a filmmaker. So if you don't know me, go check out the channel, please. And if you like it, consider clicking that subscribe button because it really helps me and the channel out. Plus, don't tell anyone, not even Chandler, but it's free. And the first reason is Sarah Connor. Not only do they bring her back, they bring her back as a badass. They bring her back as someone who is not traumatized by the events of the first movie, but is traumatized by the events of the first movie the second movie, and after all that struggle, after all that fight, after gaining trust in the Terminator to raise her son, she loses her son. This is someone who has lost it all. She has nothing to lose, and she is more of a badass than she ever was before. Not saying that this is a better film or a better Sarah Connor than the one in T2, but she is much more of a badass in this one. But there is one very specific reason why I love this Sarah Connor played so brilliantly, and that is the dichotomy that it presents with Sarah Connor. She is the one killing machines, but compare her to Grace, and even the new savior, and even the T-800 that stayed behind with also no sense of direction after completing his mission like her, the dichotomy that Sarah Connor comes across as more of a machine than a human. And when they finally meet the T-800 and all those feelings of regret and loss and rage come back up for her, it creates a very interesting dynamic that we're going to talk about as my reason number four. And reason number four is the relationship of the machine, the T-800, that killed John Connor to Linda Hamilton's Sarah Connor. Sarah learns to be more of a human again, to trust in humanity, to have hope that this will all somehow fix itself and they can defeat Legion through the actions and the beliefs of the T-800 that after killing John Connor stays behind and has no sense of direction. I love this because number one it shows us that the T-800s aren't really the villains. They never were in the original. They're just the muscle for Skynet. Skynet is the real villain. And I love 
whenever a Terminator movie explores that. And I love that the T-800 has tried to be a peaceful man, but can't escape that regret, much like Sarah Connor, but while the T-800 has become more of a human, she has become more of a machine, and they have to learn with each other. And Sarah Connor teaches the T-800 yet again to be a lethal killing machine once more. Reason number three is that it brings back the great horror elements that we love in the Terminator franchise. I told this to Chandler when he invited me to make this video, is that I do really like Terminator Dark Face, but I do like Genesis even more. Even though that one doesn't have the horror elements. But the horror elements are exactly what makes this one stand out. Out. Gabriel Luna's Terminator in this film brings back that dread, that sense of relentlessness and viciousness from every great Terminator villain. Arnie in the first one, Robert Patrick in the second one, and he's yet again a deadly killing machine that seems unstoppable throughout the film. The visuals to implement this idea of horror are spectacular. I love getting that sense of dread throughout this film whenever you think that dude is gonna stay down and he comes back up without even a scratch, seemingly. I also love that he can multiply into two bodies. So whenever you are stopping one, the other one is just around the corner waiting to kill you. It has enough callbacks to the previous films and also updates enough elements to make this its own thing. Look, I know on the surface Legion is just another version of Skynet. It kind of is, yes, but it also changes enough things to be a new, more efficient villain for the franchise. The issue with Skynet is that it was a centralized AI that was in one spot, you just need to get there, and then when you kill that one, you eliminate it all. Legion is more dangerous. There is no destroying Legion with just one good blow. It takes an entire journey and hopefully sequels to this film to get the job done. Maybe there is no hope for our characters, but with that in comes that sense of dread yet again that they do not have hope to win at all ever, and I love that this film does that. Again, it's a small element, but it has enormous repercussions, enough ripples to make it feel different. And my final but main reason why I love this film is that it retcons the original films, but also it doesn't. In Genesis, in Salvation, in Rise of the Machines, those movies wanted to change the original storyline. This one doesn't. This one goes with it, but makes it tougher on our characters. What if John and Sarah had one, but what if it wasn't over? Because when you really think about it, yes, I got pissed when John Connor died, especially right at the beginning of this film. But think about it. Is it really that good a story if our characters win. If our characters win, if they don't have a conflict, then there's no story. It puts our characters in the toughest position they've been, but it also gives our characters a new glimmer of hope. And the fact that it is so similar to the original, there's a new savior, there's a new version of Skynet, there's a new future that we have to stop from happening, there's this one person we have to keep alive to make sure that future does happen. It's purposefully done so. It's kind of like poetry. It rhymes, it echoes one another, and I love how these stories do that. So those are my five reasons why Terminator Dark Fate is a great movie. This is not meant to convince you, it's just meant to make you understand why me, and I know a few others, quite enjoy this film. Thank you so much Chandler for having me on. I cannot wait to see what are the arguments you present for why Dark Fate is a bad movie. I cannot wait for us to discuss this my friend as well as your audience. Let us know in the comments below and once more thank you so much and please do come check me out if you haven't done so yet. 
I'll see you there. Thank you so much, Ren, for being a part of this video. Be sure to go ahead and subscribe to his YouTube channel, youtube.com slash rengeekness. You'll find a bunch of awesome content on there, and please go ahead and check out what he does on his channel. Now, with that out of the way, I'm going to go ahead and give in my argument on why I would say that Terminator Dark Fate is more so a bad movie. Now, in my defense, would I say that Terminator Dark Fate is a bad movie? I'm more leaning in on saying not really it's just mostly boring it's a mediocre film at best i feel like it doesn't add in anything special or anything that would have me dedicated to constantly watch this movie again not even the subverting expectations of killing off john connor at the beginning and some other expectations that i didn't expect in the film to happen it just didn't seem to have any purpose to re-watch this film again it felt stale and boring and i didn't care for it Personally, I'd much rather watch Terminator Salvation than I would watch this. But anyway, let me go ahead and just state out my reasons. Number one, I have a problem with the brand new characters. The actresses for Grace and Gina, they're not bad actresses. In fact, these characters are not bad people. They're not characters that are worth hating on. But what makes a Terminator movie so much fun to watch is that the story arcs of the characters are so engaging. The assumption that I'm getting to Terminator Dark Fate is that... They want to create characters that are not only fun to watch, but we really want to get engaged with. But the problem is, is that their story arcs are pretty boring. The thing with Grace's character is that while she has some pretty neat fight moves, her story arc is very generic. This story, while a little different, it's very similar to Kyle. And while I really like Kyle, there's traumatization with this character. He has post-traumatic disorder, and he's doing everything to the best of his abilities to keep calm on his mission and trying to save Sarah Connor. That right there is engaging. But with Grace, it seems like that she has no problem at all. She says a bunch of swear words, occasionally says one-liners, and at times she's like very determined to accomplish her mission. And then Gina is pretty much in resemblance to Sarah Connor. And the problem with her story arc is that there's no conflict with her character either. When looking at her backstory, it's pretty easy to understand her personality is that she sticks up to people and defends others, and while going on this journey, it's pretty much expected to her to be the leader who sticks up to people and defends people. That's not interesting. That's just the character you're expecting from the past to be the leader. That's the part of a Terminator franchise. You need to make characters not go in a straight line. What's going through the perspective of our characters is supposed to be an up and down emotional roller coaster. And Gina and Grace, they're nothing like that. Number two, bringing back the old characters, Sarah Connor, T-800, and John Connor. Their story should have just ended with Terminator 2. If you want to create different characters with a different type of storyline in the franchise, why would you bring back the old characters? The only reason why I assume they brought back the Connor family and the T-800 is that they want to finish off the storyline when all of the other Terminator sequels did really nothing to improve Terminator 1 and 2. And while at the beginning of the movie, they kind of had something that could adventure off into something else, it doesn't go anywhere. John Connor's death felt wasted because the movie decided to not focus on that and focus on Gina and Grace. Sarah Connor, the T-800, felt more like just supplements to help out these other two characters. So if the movie was going to do that, why have this big thing happen at the beginning of the movie? There's probably only like one lesson that this movie was trying to go into and that's humanity will never learn due to the death of John Connor. But in the end, you kind of see some amount of forgiveness, which I guess there probably isn't. But Again, that doesn't really do much because that's the same lesson that happened at the end of Terminator 2. I don't know. I don't feel like it did much of anything to the Connor family storyline. And this leads me into reason number three. They're still trying to do more Terminator films. And it seems like they're not closing out the Sarah Connor storyline. First thing that I want to say is that I'm not excited to see a character like Gina just adventure off and become the brand new leader of Judgment Day in the Terminator franchise. And I felt like that we shouldn't continue to see more of Sarah Connor's storyline and it should have just 
ended at Terminator 2. If this movie wanted to say forget all of the other Terminator sequels and just have this be the final story for the journey of the Connor family and the T-800, then okay, fine. I would have said at least there's not going to be any more Terminator movies. But then again, right at the very end, they said that the journey is not over. It's only the beginning. So not only did Sarah Connor's storyline just advance to really nothing, but we're also focusing on a character that I have no interest in seeing further run into the Terminator franchise. Even if there is going to be another Terminator franchise since this movie bombed so hard in the box office. And the final thing that I want to say is that this movie is trying so hard to being like an epic action film film that it doesn't realize that it's actually being generic rather than feeling epic. Remember in the first Terminator movie where you have the slow buildup of Arnold Schwarzenegger just coming in from the future and then just pounding people slowly one by one just so that he can get to Sarah Connor? It took its time and it delved into it because it wanted to build up the suspense and then lean into the epicness of the film. But everywhere you go when watching Terminator Dark Fate, it rushes through a lot of things like we have to get out the character backstory, we have to explain it and try to fit it as tightly as we can. We have to enforce a lot of screaming, a lot of explosions, a lot of swear words because that's stuff that we have in an epic action film. But the problem that this director doesn't see is that this has become such a broad appeal to most audiences that it's actually generic. It isn't anything unique or new. Does this movie have its slow moments? Sure, it does have them. But during those slow moments, the movie lacks to have these characters show some kind of bond or have empathy with each other. Which is why at the very end of the movie, when a lot of action is building up and characters die left and right, it doesn't feel earned. We're seeing things that are expected to happen because we know this happens with so many action films. And this also happened before in each of the other Terminators sequels. The T-800 dying is nothing new. Now I get that the criticism that I'm pointing out here may be subjective or they don't necessarily see it with this movie because I get it. Action films can have their type of cliches. I have my cliches. I have certain type of action films that I can purely enjoy just for the sake of pure entertainment. But let me give you guys something that maybe would help you to understand what I'm talking about. In the first Terminator movie, if you see Kyle talking to Sarah Connor while they're driving down the road and chasing away from the T-800 and he asks Sarah Connor, are you shot? And then he repeats a line a second time saying, are you effing shot? Wouldn't you say that's a little enforced and not naturally saying that? You would think that this movie is forcing itself to trying to be epic rather than naturally feeling like to be an epic. Instead of the T-800 building up and killing any other Sarah Connors one by one at a slowly suspenseful pace, instead they decided to rush through everything and just decided to get to the main point and try to kill off Sarah Connor right then and there at that moment. Wouldn't you say that this movie also feels rushed and is trying to get straight to the point. That's why I think that Terminator Dark Fate doesn't really work that well, and I feel like I can't find myself to enjoy the movie that much. And there you go, guys. That's my defense on why I would say Terminator Dark Fate is kind of a bad movie. Not necessarily a bad movie, but mostly a mediocre film at best. But what do you guys think of Terminator Dark Fate? Put them down in the comment section below and like this video if you agree with what I say or dislike this video if you disagree with what I say. I don't mind the dislikes. So that is it I have for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching and thank you so much, Ren, for being a part of this video. I really do appreciate you taking the time to be on this YouTube channel and being a part of this series. Be sure to go and subscribe to his YouTube channel if you have not, and I'll be sure to see you in the next video.